What's going on you guys? Karen here and we got the shop. We we got a three basically a three car garage, maybe a little bigger. It's a 20 foot by 30 foot garage, warehouse type. Uh, it's a metal building um, and to save on cost because lumber prices are so expensive instead of doing traditional insulation and then either drywalling or plywooding um, I just went with this like this foil type insulation. It's not best but um, it's getting me by it's it's very hot in Southern California but uh, with the uh, swamp cooler I got the swamp cooler right there and basically this is the shop guys so no longer in a 600 square foot apartment um, we've been living at this new place for about I'd say seven or eight months um, I did a completely re new rehab on the house and basically now um, getting the garage all in order while doing rehabs on this property and then another property for my dad I was basically uh, starting a software company in 2006, uh, 2019 uh, for like construction and real estate I've built that up to be pretty successful making quite a bit of money as far as a different type of software and sort of the instead of like that SaaS business model for software it's more of a consumer owned software program um, and a lot of construction companies are really liking that because of the fact that software costs so much especially for the construction industry so I've been working with that with a partner I got a developer um, I hired a developer to be on the team uh, I'm working with third-party developing companies to uh, basically outsource some of the work because there's different types of companies throughout um, different parts of the area. So other than that, uh, that's a, like an update on the other businesses that I've been starting as far as like doing construction and real estate and then the software, we also are trying to build Easy Press. Well, the good thing is I got investment. I got investment money. The investment money helped build the garage, insulate. I got new tools. I got a new um, metal chop saw. I got some bandsaw. I got a vise. We got some clamps. I got my silver press in here now. So I'm not working off of just a 3D model and then the, 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 the piece itself. You can see here that I'm working on version 3. And uh, version 3, the direction of version 3 is this lighter faster, quieter, more compact version basically. Version 2 was just too bulky, it was way too heavy, and um, it was very expensive to make. And I feel that in order to get this working correctly as a product, I need to be able to produce it cheaply. Not so much as cheaply that it's, it's going to be built cheap, but the, the components that build a strong, reliable product, uh, the, the end cost needs to be sustainable. Like people, screen printers need to be able to afford this. And it's, it's more so designed around those screen printers that have been manual screen printing for a while and they're looking for a way to basically get involved in some in-between between between a manual printing press and an automatic printing press, but they don't wanna, they don't wanna upgrade their space and they don't wanna upgrade their quote unquote press to an automatic. So I feel like this is gonna be a nice little middle ground. You can see here that I got, uh, I just CNC this part on the CNC mill that I got at the end of 2019. And this thing's really nice, I CNC'd it. Uh, this is a just a bolt, I tapped it on top, so this bolt's coming down. Right now I'm working on a bracket system that will mount to this 8020 extrusion. This 8020 extrusion is really cool because it has these slots on all on all sides of the uh, the extrusion itself, which allows me to put these slots in and put in some nuts and bolts that will uh, basically rise that and uh, secure it to the actual extrusion piece. Basically, what this piece is here, I'm calling it like the height adjustment. This will be mounted to a bracket. And this, when you rotate the bolt, it will push down the bracket, which then would in return would push down the 8020 extrusion. This will allow you to rise and lower the, uh, the squeegees so you can uh, maintain different heights for your squeegees. And then uh, also will work on pressure as far as uh, going pneumatic with that. 
we got a tensioning belt over here. So I haven't tested this idea yet. I'm hoping that it works because it's gonna save so much money on cost. It'll be just as fat, if not faster, than the threaded rod. I'm moving to this belt system, this belt drive system, and uh, I'm continuing the bearing design where the bearings will sit on the chassis itself, the 8020 extrusion. And basically what's handling the driving force between pushing and pulling is a stepper motor still, but instead of being a screw drive system, it's a belt drive system. So I think it's gonna work. Um, again, I'm testing it out right now. Even if it doesn't work, then we have some other options as far as doing maybe a chain drive. I know for sure a chain would work or uh, a, a beefier belt. I know a belt system will work. It's just depending on like what type of belt. And right now I'm gonna try, this belt system right here is typically used on 3D printers. It's pretty thin, it's pretty lightweight. Um, but then again, I, I think the bearings are carrying the load. I don't think the, the uh, belt itself will carry the load. That's why I think this will work. Also two, which I don't have out here, but I can show you on CAD probably. One little update there is I'm moving away from having basically from three, I'm sorry, four pneumatics, four pneumatics that would control a flood squeegee and two pneumatics that would control the flood squeegee and then two pneumatics that would control the, um, the print squeegees. I'm working on this idea where instead of having a total of four pneumatics, I could probably go down to two pneumatics and only one squeegee. Kind of like what we would normally do with manual screen printing. Manual screen printing, you, you only use one squeegee. You don't use a squeegee for flooding and then printing. We use one squeegee and we, we just change the direction of the squeegee and the angle of that squeegee to do the certain tasks that we're doing. Flooding is usually you're pulling towards you or some people would lightly push the ink to flood. Um, and then printing, you're either pulling that ink or you're pushing that ink. And all of that is just the direction of the squeegee. So why not create some type of angle adjustment for that squeegee itself? Now, one way to do that is to use a servo motor. So I'm gonna see if I can find this real quick. It's a servo mechanism that will rotate on a servo axle and it will move this way back and forth and it will change the angle. So this way in software, a lot of this will be perfected in the software. The software will control most of these movements because you need to create that sequence of events of like, okay, what angle does the servo need to go to in order for it to uh, flood? And then what, what angle does the servo need to go to in order to print? So there's that. Um, a lot of this height adjustment that I have here that you saw, that's getting removed. I'm changing it to a different design and different iteration uh, that I like better. It's easier to use. Um, so there's that. And then basically, other than the servo mechanism and the threaded rod moving to a belt, that's about it, guys. That's a quick update. Thanks.